With the announcement of the Dragonlance Warriors of Kryn War Game for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, Wizards of the Coast is once again taking cue from advanced Dungeons & Dragons. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about Battle System, Douglas Niles' war game and how it was integrated into Dragonlance. I'd like to take a moment and thank the members of this channel and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate link. I am referencing multiple articles and modules for this information. If I leave anything out or misspeak, please leave a comment below. To understand why Wizards of the Coast is creating a war game for Dragonlance and Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, you need to understand their approach to Dungeons and Dragons. Everything old is new again. Dungeons and Dragons came out of Chainmail by Gary Gygax and Jeff Perrin in 1971. It was a miniature war game and is seen as the precursor to original Dungeons and Dragons published in 1974. Ironically, there would be no effective rules to manage mass combat to come out of TSR for Dungeons & Dragons until Battle System, which was originally released in 1985. It was created by Douglas Niles, the author of many of the Dragonlance adventures for advanced Dungeons & Dragons. Bell of Lost Souls describes Battle System was split into four parts, Introduction, Basic, Intermediate, and Advanced, each of which layered in more complexity. Basic was all about melee and movement, intermediate added ranged weapons, cavalry and individual heroes as well as terrain. The advanced game added in magic spells, flying, weather, monsters and other special rules. Its campaign rules were always intended to be a part of a role-playing campaign and was critically acclaimed when it was released and was widely praised for streamlining complex rules of first edition Dunces and Dragons. The original Battle System set won the H.G. Wells Award, and the second edition in 1989 won the Origins Award for Best Miniatures Rules of 1989. In fact, included with the original box set for Battle System was an advanced game scenario for Dragonlance Battle of Quelanost. It takes place during the same time period as DL2 Dragons of Flame while the heroes are in Pax Tharkas. Of course, just a couple months after Battle System was released, DL6 Dragons of Ice was released, also written by Douglas Niles, who included a battle system scenario for the Battle of the Ice Reaches. This allowed the players to step back from their individual characters and run the 700 to 800 combatant scenario as a war, then return to their characters afterward. This is exactly what Ray Winnegar, head of D&D at Wizards, said about the adventure Dragonlance, Shadow of the Dragon Queen, and the board game Dragonlance Warriors of Kryn. From the Polygon article, quote, We zero in on this notion that Dragonlance is a war story. In the spirit of that, at the same time we are releasing Shadow of the Dragon Queen, which is the role-playing experience, we are releasing this battle game. It allows you to play out sort of massive military battles in the world of Kryn. But one of the interesting things about that game is that it has a lot of narrative elements, just like a role-playing game. It's a board game, but you're asked to narrate what's happening and whatnot. If you choose while you're playing the role-playing campaign when major sort of battles break out in the story, you can break out the board game and start playing the board game. Your characters from the role-playing game import into the board game. You keep playing your characters in the board game, and you can learn what amazing, incredible, heroic things they do in these battles. But that experience is entirely optional. This is, of course, following the tradition of calling back to advanced Dungeons & Dragons, starting with their approach to the multiverse, and now with wargaming. Battle System did not begin and end with DL6 Dragons of Ice, however, as Dragonlance featured the War of the Lance, and this allowed TSR to integrate their new war game in many other ways. This would continue with DL8 Dragons of War, where the adventure put the system front and center with the Battle of the High Claris Tower. 
Though a simplified alternative combat system is offered, TSR was clearly trying to encourage players to use Battle System to fight the major battles of the High Clarus Tower that ends the adventure. It was one of TSR's many attempts to make Battle System successful in the 80s and 90s. The adventure also contains rules for depicting sieges, which was a notable expansion for the Battle System rules. DL-11, Dragons of Glory, wasn't actually a battle system tactical game, but rather a strategic board game unto itself, also written by Douglas Niles with Tracy Hickman. You could use battle system to resolve medium-scale skirmishes, but it wasn't necessary. In this way, you could use this to further enhance the campaign by stepping out of the traditional character-driven role-playing to resolve massive battles, or reliving specific scenarios to further enhance your Dragonlance campaign. It contained the Fall of Sylvanesty, the Salamnic Plain, the Kender Strike, and the Siege of Calaman scenarios. In Dragon Magazine number 107 from March 1986, they introduced advanced Dragons of Glory rules and scenarios, including the invasion of Abanasinia, the Quilinasty War, the Maelstrom Fleet action, and the Battle for Naraka. Again, this is precisely what Dragonlance Warriors of Kryn is meant to do, but that's not even the end to the infusion of wargaming with Dragonlance. DL-12 Dragons of Faith would return to battle system with the Battle of Istar underneath the Blood Sea. The goal is to assist the Sea Elves as they attempt to defeat the King of the Deep. DL-14 Dragons of Triumph would see a return of Douglas Niles and his battle system to the modules. The battle system scenario therein represents a grand culmination in the military resolution of the conflict. It is, incidentally, the largest battle ever published for the advanced Dungeons & Dragons game system on a tactical level. Five evil armies take to the field around Naraka to meet the combined forces of good as they march on the citadel of evil in the Battle of Naraka. This would be the end of first edition of Battle System and Dragonlance until second edition and the castle's boxed set, which would explore the Minotaur fortress Drungar defending the advance of Thenal's undead armies in southern Talidas. Dungeons and Dragons, Dragonlance, Shadow of the Dragon Queen, and Dragonlance Warriors of Kryn may be new concepts for 5th edition players, but they are simply the newest iteration of gameplay that was created 37 years ago. With veteran war game designers Rob Daviau and Stephen Baker behind the Dragonlance Warriors of Kryn board game, I am encouraged that it will live up to or exceed the original Battle System Tactical and DL-11 Dragons of Glory simulation war games that were staples of the advanced Dungeons & Dragons Dragonlance campaign. And that is all I have to say about Battle System and Wargaming. I hope you enjoy the information. Do you appreciate the Battle System game? Are you looking forward to playing Dragonlance Warriors of Kryn board game? And finally, if you wanted to play a war game, would you stay in the Dungeons & Dragons IP or use one of the myriad of others? Leave a comment below. I'd like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonland Saga, and until next time, remember, Behold, the giant Kender of Balifor!